Good morning. Good morning. Our entrance song is We Gather Together, number 762. We gather together to ask In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. We offer this Mass today in thanksgiving for the special intentions of Deacon Dana McCarthy. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by first recalling to mind our sins and be sorry for them. Lord Jesus, by your life, you broke the chains of death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, by your death, you brought us new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your resurrection, you set us free. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladdens us year by year by the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to rich eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, 
I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, our God, throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts that, that seek the Lord. the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, 
how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. The story of the two disciples on the way to Emmaus is a very powerful story that reflects and, and echoes through centuries and unfolds before us the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Here, the two disciples were downcast. They were disappointed. They were struggling in their hearts how to reconcile things that they were promised to, but it seems to be it didn't happen. It all ended up in failure. The master that they thought was the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, died on the cross. And now they have nobody else. So they were kind of struggling about this. They're talking about it. They're trying to patch up, you know, whatever they have you know, in their thoughts, in their minds of what Jesus had told them, trying to find answers. Is, is there something else? And when we look about that in our own darkest moments of our lives, we kind of try to find answers too. When we are confronted with difficulties, with challenges that breaks our hearts and our, and our backs, we question God, why? Give me an explanation of how these things will end. We struggle about that. But then they were also looking more intently inward. They were listening to themselves. The Lord went with them and then asked them, what are you talking about with each other? 
Isn't it that sometimes the Lord also comes into us in our lives and asks us, what are you really discussing among yourselves? What are you talking about? Because oftentimes what we talk about are opinions, our own assumptions. And our assumptions could be wrong on how to interpret what's going on with our lives. So here where the Lord comes in is to provide them with an opportunity for them to be able to understand more what's going on. Listen to the scriptures. So he went with them and talked to them about the scriptures. Isn't that the first part of the Mass? The liturgy of the Word that we are doing right now. It is the liturgy of the Word that opens our hearts and our minds to listen to God. Now, we're not listening to our own voices. We're asking God, speak, Lord, and your servant is listening. Let me listen to you first. What are you talking, Lord? What are you telling me this time? Let me open the scripture and listen to you. So Jesus explained to the disciples, you know, from the beginning to end, of everything that has happened has always been prophesied. That it's always been according to God's plan. During the Easter Vigil, we listened to seven readings from the Old Testament, but these are all stories. It's stories how God fulfills his promises in spite of the unfaithfulness of the people. So you see the creation story and then the prophet's story of how people have neglected and turned away from God, but then comes in the New Testament how we are all promised and the fulfillment of that promise in the New Testament when Jesus came. So this is the scripture that is being handed on to us now. We have it in our hands. It is the word of God. It is Jesus present in our midst to the word of God in the scriptures. But then what opened their eyes after the scriptures, Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them. That is the Eucharist, the second part of the liturgy at Mass. After the liturgy of the Word comes in the liturgy of the Eucharist, wherein we are encountering Jesus. It is Him. That's why their eyes were open. They remembered the Last Supper. They remembered when Jesus did this with them during that Passover. Jesus is truly alive. He's always been with us. In the most difficult times of our lives, we're being called upon. Focus your attention to the table. Focus your attention to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. He is there. He will encourage you. He will lift the veil of sadness from your face so that you can see more clearly and not lose hope that God is there in our midst, that he was not defeated, but he is triumphant. Let us always focus our attention and never lose sight on the Eucharist. And there, after the Eucharist, what happened next? And this is critical too, because what they did, they did not go to Emmaus anymore. But instead, they went back to Jerusalem. They bear witness to the Eucharist that they have partaken with the Lord. They proclaim that Jesus is truly alive. When we receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, our mission is to go out to the world, proclaim by our lives that Jesus truly is alive. Let us be joyful. Let us rejoice. Let us touch other people's lives by our compassion, by our encouragements. The other disciples haven't seen Jesus. After he has risen from the dead, it was just Peter, as mentioned, and John. But then they encouraged the other disciples. You too must encourage each other. You too should bring that burning light so that others can be freed from darkness. The light is not our light, 
It is the light of Jesus who has risen. May he who is risen from the dead warm your hearts so that the love of Jesus may radiate through you to others. In confidence and faith, let us lift up our needs to the Lord. For the church, may God grant her wisdom and fortitude in helping all people come to know Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For civic leaders, may God grant them the courage to work tirelessly to defend the dignity and sanctity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are suffering in any way, may God make his abiding presence known to them as they endure their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this assembly, may God help us turn our prayers here into action in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Our special intention is for Deacon Dana McCarthy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our own personal intentions, not only to God, in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, please look with kindness upon the prayers we offer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, 
but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lived and reigned forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace, Father. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. May I request our communion ministers to the sick to come forward. My dear brother and sister, you are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and homebound. Assure them of the prayers and support of this community and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Let us now begin with our Divine Mercy Novena. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the sixth day of the Novena. Today, bring to me the meek and humble souls and the souls of little children. Most merciful Jesus, you yourself have said, learn from me for I am meek and humble of heart. Receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart all meek and humble souls and the souls of little children. These souls send all heaven into ecstasy and they are the heavenly father's favorites. They are a sweet smelling bouquet before the throne of God. God himself takes delight in their fragrance. These souls have a permanent abode in your most compassionate heart, O Jesus. And they unceasingly sing out a hymn of love and mercy. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon meek souls, upon humble souls, and upon little children who are enfolded in the abode which is the most compassionate heart of Jesus. These souls bear the closest resemblance to your Son. Their fragrance rises from the earth and reaches your very throne. Father of mercy and of all goodness, I beg you, by the love you bear these souls and by the delight you take in them, bless the whole world that all souls together may sing out the praises of your mercy for endless ages. Amen. And a short reflection. Our reflection for today is the facing the evil one. If you wish to avoid the fierce hatred of the evil one, then refrain from striving for holiness. Satan will still hate you, but he will not hate you as much as the saint. But of course, this is foolishness. Why would anyone avoid holiness so as to avoid the hatred of the evil one? It is true that the closer we come to God, the more the evil one will seek to destroy us. Though it's good to be aware of this, it's nothing to fear. In fact, attack from the evil one should be seen as signs to us of our closeness to God. Reflect today upon any ways that you have felt overwhelmed by fear. Very often, this fear is the fruit of you letting the trickery and malice of the evil one affect you. Instead of letting fear affect you, allow the evil that confronts you to be the cause of your increase in faith and trust in God. Evil will either tear us down or become an opportunity for us to grow in God's grace and strength. Lord, fear is useless. What is needed is faith. Increase my faith, I pray, so that I will be daily under the control of your gentle inspirations and not under the control of the fear caused by the attacks of the evil one. Jesus, I trust in you. Opening prayer. You expired, Jesus, but, but the source of life gushed forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus 
as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the 
sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole Father, 
I offer you the body and the blood, soul and divinity. Of his horrible passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his horrible passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake. Of his horrible passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his horrible passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake. His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of His sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of His sorrowful passion. Passion. Have mercy on us and on the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake, for the sake of His sorrowful passion. passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world, eternal Father. I offer you the body. And the blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in a torment of our sin. Of the whole world for the sake, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Of his sorrowful passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake, for the sake of his sorrowful Passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 
have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father i offer you the body and the blood soul and divinity of your dear Beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement of our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of His horrible passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world Of his sorrowful passion, passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
closing prayer. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your body will, a holy will, which is love and mercy itself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Divine mercy and compassion the whole universe. Divine mercy endowing us with immortal life. Divine mercy shielding us from deserved punishment. Divine mercy lifting us from the misery of sin. Divine mercy justifying us to the person of the incarnate word divine mercy which flowed out from the wounds of christ divine mercy gushing forth from the sacred heart of jesus divine mercy giving us the blessed virgin mary as mother of mercy Divine mercy in revealing the mysteries of God. Divine mercy in the founding of the Holy Church. Divine mercy in instituting the Holy Sacraments. Divine mercy, first of all, in the sacraments of baptism and penance. Divine mercy in the Holy Eucharist and the sacrament of holy orders. Divine mercy in calling us to the holy faith. Divine mercy in the conversion of sinners. Divine mercy in sanctifying the just. Divine mercy in perfecting the pious. Divine mercy, fount of help for the sick and the suffering. Divine mercy, 
sweet relief for anguished hearts. Divine mercy, only hope of despairing souls. Divine mercy, accompanying us in every moment of our life. Divine mercy, anticipating our needs with graces. Divine mercy, repose of the dying. Divine mercy, heavenly delight of the saved. Divine mercy, respite and relief of the souls in purgatory. Divine mercy, crown of all saints. Divine mercy, inexhaustible source of miracles. Lamb of God, who revealed the greatest mercy in redeeming the world by dying on the cross, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who mercifully offers yourself for our sake in every holy mass, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of our sins with inexhaustible compassion, have mercy on us. The mercy of God is above all his works. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of companion, compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, King of mercy, who with you and the Holy Spirit shows us mercy now and forever. Amen. Salutary souls, Dia, Telephonisos, Dio, Sin eterno, 
Now be stoned in patria. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. 
Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth, scepter claim. All in heaven, above adore thee. Thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. 